Hello, my name is Miss Harrison and I'm the very proud head teacher of the Archer Academy Secondary School in East Finchley. I'm delighted that you are going to take part in our community literacy project, whether that is doing the work remotely and set by your year six teachers, whether that's following the self-guided study booklet, or whether that's having some time in the classroom with your teachers. There's all sorts of different ways in which we are approaching this project to ensure that you have the opportunity to enjoy this beautiful book and to feel well prepared for the journey that you have ahead of you preparing to go to secondary school. This project has been running for nearly three years now and it's had a significant impact on the confidence of young people as they prepare to start Year 7, ensuring that they are Year 7 ready. So please ensure that you look carefully at the resources that your teachers are sharing with you and that you are making the most of reading this book and the things that it can teach you about how we best open our minds to journeys ahead of us. So a little bit of an introduction for you about this beautiful story to get you started. The book was written uh, by Norton Jester and he knows all about this project and has been so impressed. And this is what the story is all about. Milo is the little boy the story is all about and he's the hero in the Phantom Pole Booth. But he's a little boy with a big problem. He is bored. I wonder if any of you know those feelings at the moment. Milo isn't just bored sometimes. He is always bored. Nothing interests him and he regards the process of seeking knowledge as a big waste of time. Then one day, Milo discovers a large package in the corner of his bedroom. Inside, it is a genuine turnpike toll booth, just waiting to be erected. When Milo drives his electrical car through the toll booth gate, he finds himself in the lands beyond, enchanting home of creatures more strange than could ever be imagined. Milo meets a ticking watchdog named Tok, who travels with him to Dictionopolis, the city of words, located in the foothills of confusion near the sea of knowledge. Here, people buy and sell letters in the marketplace. Words grow on trees in orchids, orchards, and people eat their own words. While in Dictionopolis, Milo and Tok are imprisoned with faintly macabre, the not-so-wicked witch. She tells Milo the history of the kingdom and describes how Princess Rhyme and Princess Reason have been banned from wisdom and sent to live in the castle in the air. Later, joined by Humbug, the two travel to Diginopolis, the city of numbers. The ruler of Diginopolis, masked magician, gives them a tour of a cabin where numbers are mined and precious gemstones are simply discarded as worthless. Along the way, Milo has the rare opportunity to orchestrate a sunrise and meet interesting characters. Among the strange people he meets is Dr Discord, who specialises in noises. Alec Bings, who stands when suspended in mid-air, three feet from the ground, and sees through things. And a faceless man who thinks the most important thing to do is a useless task. Then Milo with two companions courageously embark on a quest through the mountains of ignorance. With the black-hearted demons in pursuit, the three bring rhyme and reason once more to reign in wisdom and restore peace between King Azaz, ruler of Dictionopolis, and math magician, ruler of Diginopolis. During Milo's incredible adventures, he learns that life isn't dull. It is rich with words and numbers, and full of exciting possibilities, limited only by his imagination. So jump in, enjoy the book, consider the opportunities that are ahead of you, and ensure that you don't limit any of your opportunities just because of your imagination. I'm sure that would never be the case. Have fun.